year is 1997. A Russian, an American, and a British intelligence officer walk purposely through a secret military base. They are very surprised and awed by what they see and the advances in technology in the past few decades. Their guide stops them at a round metal apparatus. All of a sudden, the contraption comes to life. They stand in awe as a human being emerges from a warm liquid goo. Mr. Toastmaster, fellow Toastmasters, and honored guests. This is the stuff of movies, or is it? The officers in Austin Powers, the International Man of Mystery, were witnessing the reanimation of a cryogenically frozen human. Cryogenics is the study of materials and how they behave at extremely low temperatures. The word cryogenics is from the Greek word cryo, meaning extremely frozen, and genesis, meaning to produce. While all things can be thawed, many things don't need to be brought back to life, or of course function properly. To be technical, scientists are known, as scientists are known to be, the branch of cryogenics dealing with frozen humans is called cryonics. These scientists will begin their freezing process as soon as death occurs. You will not be frozen in a block of ice as the movie depicts Vanilla Ice or Gary Coleman, but you will be submerged in liquid nitrogen. Your bath will be a very chilly negative 292 degrees Fahrenheit. This bath will set you back about $150,000 or if you just want your head frozen, $80,000. <laughs> There's also a $500 annual membership fee. Now you might ask, well, why would somebody only freeze their head? <laughs> well, your body is really not that important, according to scientists in the field of cryonics. Memory, personality, and your individuality is stored in the cells and chemicals of your brain. If scientists can figure out a way to preserve your brain and then reanimate it, well, they, then they don't need your body. They can bring you back to life, and theoretically, you can live forever, possibly in another body. So wait, they freeze willing people, they take lots of their money, yet they still can't do this process. And these people may be waiting a very long time to come back to life. The technology is just not there yet. You might ask, well, if you're thawed, do you reanimate being the same as you are now? Well, let's think about this. You have a fresh strawberry in one hand. And on the other hand, you have a frozen and then thawed strawberry. Do they appear the same? They do not. The damage from freezing the human body is pretty severe. The water in your body will freeze, it will expand, and it will crack your cells. To reduce this damage, the scientists will pump your body full of chemicals and get rid of the water. Unfortunately, this chemical solution is very toxic, and they can't reduce the effects of these toxins. The other thing that they have to repair is the damage from the lack of oxygen during this cryonic state, and they also have to reverse what caused you to die in the first place. Their hope is that they can employ nanotechnology, or microscopic robots, in order to repair this tissue damage if they were able to reanimate you in the future. So what do you do if your body is very da badly damaged and it can't be repaired? Well, like we spoke of before, we can just get rid of your body. They're hoping to clone your body and reattach it to your head. Or even better yet, their hope is that they can scan your memory and transfer it to a new brain. And there you go. You're all set. You don't even need your body anymore. So how does one justify this process? Scientists can't even guarantee that they can bring you back to life or they can bring you back safely. Now, I'm not sure why they are deciding to study this, but it is a very fascinating topic. 
There have been many books, TV shows, and movies written about this subject. Some celebrities, such as the baseball player Ted Williams, have even taken the plunge. If he wakes up in decades, or possibly centuries from now, is he still himself? Will he recognize himself? But maybe he'll be the one to save the planet from Dr. Evil. Thank you very much.